morning. I'm not sure how many of you have seen intracranial EEG recordings. So I thought I'll give you a sample of what intracranial EEG is all about and give you some understanding of things we are looking for. So let's start here. Number one, we do not employ a 1020 system because depth electrodes basically are probes that are placed by a brain lab neuro navigation system into different regions of the brain. What you need to know is contact 1 is the deepest contact so each probe has 8 contacts so this is 1 to 8 contacts here this is the left amygdalar probe this is the left hippocampal probe right amygdalar probe and the right hippocampal probe the target is the left amygdalar contact 1 is in the hippocampus and the left amygdala contact 8 is the most superficial electrode. Same thing applies with the left hippocampal and the right hippocampal and amygdala electrodes. So here we are at the seizure right, uh, right at the time of the seizure onset. I'll take off this cursor. You see a discharge here, so this is an epileptic spike and the electrographic seizure onset is from contacts 1, 2 and 3. The highest amplitude in fact is contact 2 of the left hippocampal probe and these green lines are separated by one second very similar to what you see on the scalp recordings. A few other things that you need to note is the sensitivity. Normally when you're recording scalp recordings you're looking at a sensitivity of 7 microvolts per millimeter. Here you have a sensitivity of 150 microvolts per millimeter so these are very high amplitudes. The sampling rate, although not shown on this uh, recording, we are using a sampling rate of 2000 Hz for intracranial recording. And you can see a very clear onset of the electrographic seizure from the left hippocampal contacts. And then, very quickly, within a second, you start seeing involvement of the left amygdala and this is how it continues. So the seizure, as we define the seizure, it has a clear beginning, so you've seen the clear beginning. It has a clear end, as I will show you, and it has evolution in frequencies, ampl in amplitude and frequency. So evolution in frequency and amplitude is a feature of electrographic seizures, and you can see the very clear change in frequency and amplitude. In fact, you can see a field that is far more extensive than what you saw at the beginning. And at this time there is some rhythmic activity noted in the right amygdala and right hippocampal contacts 1 to 4 as well. As we go on with the seizure, there is an abrupt cessation of electrographic seizure on the left hemisphere. So this is the left amygdala, left hippocampus. Seizure stops here and continues to evolve on the right hemisphere. And this is a feature, in fact, when you see something clinically, you may see a change in clinical presentation as the seizure progresses. So the, there is almost flattening on the left hemisphere now, and the seizure evolves, sort of continues with on just one contact before it completely disappears. So this is a good example of intracranial EG. We normally use intracranial EG when we are not absolutely certain about the seizure, seizure location in someone that we are considering a candidate for epilepsy surgery. So patients who have failed two or three conventional anti-epileptic drugs in reasonable doses in, or are not able to tolerate those medications may be considered a surgical candidate. Surgery in the best selected patients can in fact even cure some patients of their seizures. The best outcomes that we've seen is patients who've gone seizure free and not just seizure free but have also come off the medications. So if you are a patient you need to discuss this with your doctor. Discuss what are, are you a candidate for epilepsy surgery and if the doctor says yes then you need to know what are the expectations. Would I go completely seizure free? what are the chances that I will come off the medications, how does it affect my life, and how are the seizures, and it also depends on how the seizures are affecting your life at the present time. So I will end 
the discussion here and probably we'll have some more tutorials about intracranial EGs. Thank you.